Now we come to some of the more memorable moments in cricket. And first up is the great Don Bradman, with the most famous duck in Test history. It was the Don's last innings at the end of the greatest batting career of all time. He comes in. Well, it's a wonderful reception. The whole crowd is standing, and the England team are joining in, and led by Yardley, three cheers for the Don. As he gets to the wicket. And now here's Hollies to bowl to him from the Vauxhall end. No run. Hollies pitches the ball up slowly and he's bowled. Just four runs would have taken him to the perfect test average of 100 runs per inning. What a way to go. England had to wait 19 years before taking the ashes back from the Australians in 1953. It was fitting that the terrible twins Dennis Compton and Bill Edricks were together at the wicket at the oval when the winning it was made. Started by the stroke or four runs to get. Just no, is it? Is it the ashes? Yes, England have won the ashes. England won their first series in Australia in 22 years in 1954-55 mainly due to the lightning fast bowling of Frank Typhoon Tyson. He took 28 wickets in England's 3-1 victory when producing what many still consider the fastest bowling ever seen in a Nash's contest. The oval pitch looked like a beach as Derek Underwood mopped up the Australian batting with a magnificent display of spin bowling in 1968. He had everybody around the wicket in close catching positions during a dramatic battle against the clock after rain had threatened to wash out the game. So Mallet is out, second ball, three to get. Ten men round the bat. Doesn't matter about the fours or sixes, runs don't matter at all. Ooh, he's out as he caught. Look at Brown, look at Dave Brown, he's gone, and that was a better catch. More difficult because he had to go right, right low for it. Oh, what a day is Dave Brown having. And Underwood too. Coming in round the wicket this time, Underwood. And he got him. Burled him. Off stump, knocked out of the ground. And Australia are 120 for nine with just one wicket to go and ten minutes and a half left. In variety, has been there for four hours, ten minutes. A superb innings for this country. And the series is drawn. Underwood has taken seven wickets for 50 runs. Being completely mobbed. The Australians, and quite a few of England's batsmen, will tell you that Dennis Lilly and Jeff Thompson were even faster than Frank Tyson when they exploded on the Ashes scene in the 1970s. And it could be that may have been off the bat. And he's caught. Greg Chappell. Libby to Amos. And the field for caught behind. He's out. And Colin Cowdy discovered that big Max Walker gave great support. A bad shot. Oh. Out. And that was a nasty one. Edbridge didn't move there. It wasn't, I should think, it couldn't be termed a bouncer. England bowled. That's the vital break. Was there ever better timing for a century of centuries than by Jeff Boycott in front of his own supporters at Headingley in 1977? That's it. That's a half volley through mid-arm for four. The back goes in the air, the England players come out to applaud what really has got to be a moment here of significance. Now we're back with Master Blaster Viv Richards and his astonishing one day international under the Old Trafford in 1983, when he almost played and beat England on his own. 
His close pally in both and was among those on the receiving end. No problem, a single anywhere he wants it, and that, he decided, was once again on the leg side. He's made it into four, which takes him on to 103. And what a great innings this has been. 103 out of 173. With wickets tumbling all around him. He's only received 112 balls. 12 fours in it. And the seventh time he's made 100 in limited over cricket. That's the great joy of uh, Viv Richards. He's immediately put him into the crowd for six. Oh, that's a, a real cracker of a shot. Soared away into the far distance there, right smack into the middle of the crowd. So 150 goes on the board for Viv Richards, holding down the wicket to shake him by the hand. That's gone a magnificent six, right over the top. And as you might expect, it ended with a four. Richard's bat held high. One of the great innings of one day cricket. One eighty-nine not out, and he alone is responsible for putting West Indies in such a very strong position. There are few more exciting things in Test cricket than a hat trick. Here comes a cracker from Dominic Cork against the West Indies. Oh, that's the first wicket of the day. Dominic Cork has the knack of making things happen. Big appeal. He's got him. Two wickets in two balls. Junior Murray did nothing more than just shuffle his front foot across in front of the stumps. Well, it's another good shout. He's done it. Dominic Cork has a hat trick. Carl Hooper has got another W first ball. What an effect this man, Dominic Cork, is having on this game of cricket. And here's a great Darren Goff hat trick against Australia in Sydney in 1999. Darren Goff, has he done it again? Yes, he has. Fourth test in Melbourne. He won't improve on that today. We saw it in the Melbourne Test, and Darren Goff has done it again. Darren Goff on a hat-trick. Colin Miller is the man to try and stop him. Got it! Got it! Well-deserved, a magnificent delivery from Darren Goff. Knocked the stumps over twice. Dismissed Ian Healy, they're the three he will remember the rest of his life. I doubt if there was ever a better first ball bowled in a test match in England than this one by Shane Warne that completely baffled my caddy. And I was just as amazed as I confirmed the dish believing Gatty was out. I suppose can believe it. First ball, lethal. Now was that some of the sharp turn that Ian Chappell was describing to us before Shane Warne had the ball in his hand? It's in the book. Mike Gatting, Bold Warren, four. I think for a moment that Mike Gatting must have felt that it uh, it perhaps hit the, the keeper and went back onto the stumps. It was a perfectly pitched leg spinner. Pitching just outside leg with a little bit of curve, and that's a beautiful delivery. It's not a bad one to start with. Coming up now, lots of wicked. And we start with the chief executioner, Kirtley Ambrose. First runs for England. Oh, trouble here, trouble. This is absolute disaster for England. And that really is a complete tragedy. That's out. Robin Smith has gone. Can you ask? Curtly Ambrose knows it's out. That's a thin little nick 
from Graham Hick. And this man Ambrose can do absolutely no wrong whatsoever. That's it. Wicket number five. Bobby Ambrose strikes once more. Catching practice, Brian Lara takes it with no bother whatever. England are 45 for nine with Carrick going for one. Early morning overcast, but it's broken. And that's in the air, Benjamin down there for it. The match is over, the West Indies have won. That England managed to have the last laugh. They skittled the West Indies in the fourth test to become the first visiting team to win a test match in Barbados for 59 years. He's out. West Indies have lost the wicket. Jimmy Adams goes. Gone with him. Night Watchman out. It wasn't just the quickies who did the damage. Yeah. Graham Hicks and Phil Tufnell also chipped in with vital wickets. It was a day skipper Mike Atherton and his men will never forget. makes no mistake that's gone high in the air Alex Stewart's the man underneath it and takes the catch he's gone Haynes out to Tufnell West Indies have lost their ninth wicket and that's it all over England have won now it's down under for a rare England success against Australia in Melbourne. Very close. It's given in. Well, there you are. That's stay down. It's right of you and Sol. It's going to be uh, Alan Mullally. It's in the air. Safely caught. Not a good attack. Is that one? Oh, what a catch. What a catch. He's got it. Ram for a cash, all fired up there. Come on, lads, he's saying. Another one or two of those, and we could just swing this one. What a catch. Full length, dive to his right. Beautiful catch. Lully drops it short. Good bouncer. Mr. Mania hits it and nails it, but how good a catch is that? Oh, well bowled. That might be the start of something special. Graham hit the man that's taken the catch. Mark War is gone. Raymond Nixon, he's gone. Yes, he has, and it's five for 140. Round the wicket, Raymond smashing. There was a big nick. He's got him. Yes, he's gone. It's six for 140. He takes the catch. This game is alive and kicking. Oh, that's close this time. He's given him. him on the toe. He's getting him, he's getting him a great win for England at the MCG. 